Thank you for joining us for this episode of Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Matthew Dowling of the 51st Legislative District in Fayette and Somerset Counties. Today we are at Heritage Coal and I'm with Tim Hunt, who's the superintendent here. Uh, this facility is relatively new, Tim, isn't that uh, correct? Yes. So yes. tell me a little bit about what is going on in the background. We're cleaning coal today. Uh, yes. Uh, we are running the wash plant, processing, taking the ash out of it uh, for metallurgical aspects of, of the coal uh, for making metal. So how does the process start? Where's the coal coming from, number one? The coal will come from our separate jobs uh, up here on the hill. Uh, we mine it, we bring it out, we segregate it up here on uh, the pad, uh, depending on the analysis and so forth. And then uh, we uh, will put it into uh, the bins up here with a loader. Okay. It'll go down through the process of conveyor, through the breaker or the crusher, and then into the wash plant. There it's separated by first a set of screens. Uh, the coarser stuff will go over the heavy media cyclone and be processed uh, onto either to the refuse uh, screen or onto uh, the clean coal screen. The fines will go through and go through a set of another 15 inch cyclones through spirals and then go out into uh, um, the clean coal also. The refuse of course will come out onto a pile and the water will come down into this blue thickener here where we're, we keep recycling, reclaiming the water okay. uh, by use of the plate press. Uh, it takes very little water at all. So you're reusing that same water through the process each and every time? Yes. And once the coal is, is cleaned and separated, uh, where does it go out to? What are some of the uses for the coal that you're cleaning here? Uh, biggest part would be metallurgical for making of steel. Uh, we also have utilities, power plants, and so forth. Uh, also uh, in making cement for construction, for roadways, um, clear down to residential for house coal, now heating. In the, in the process of cleaning this coal, uh, about how many employees do you have here uh, on site that are, that are working to keep this place running? Um, we have about eight different guys uh, just right here in this location, keeping everything going. Um, we have other guys on the jobs and so forth uh, uh, and getting bigger each day. <laughs> now what is the, what's the background of uh, Heritage Coal? Where are you guys originally out of? Um, what size company is it? Um, it it's not a large company. Uh, it's constantly growing. Uh, very family oriented. Uh, originally from Rockwood. Um, although we've stripped uh, numerous different places. Sure. Uh, uh, right now, m majority of our jobs are all right here in Myersdale. Uh, we do have one over uh, Shanksville area. And a lot of your employees have been with you for quite some time. You have yes. some long-term employees. Yes. Uh, uh, several of them, uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, uh, me personally, uh, I've actually been at this location for 30 years. And what type of people would you think would be interested in a job like this? <laughs> Absolutely anyone. Uh, you, you really cannot make steel without the use of coal in making coke for the use of, steel, of making steel out of iron ore. Um, and it's a broad spectrum of people, anything from mechanics to welders to uh, parts runners, uh, the community uh, uh, vendors, uh, uh, everything from uh, uh, like clappers and ace hardware stores, uh, people sell bolts, nuts, uh, you name it. I mean, it, it's, it really helps and it is valuable to anybody. And the ones that are in the coal industry, um, I would recommend anyone trying to do it. There, there's getting to be less and less kids that are getting into it. Sure. And I, I, I think there's always going to be a demand. Yes, definitely, definitely. Well, hey, I want to thank you for bringing us out and for showing us the process a little bit, talking about what you do on site here with Heritage Coal, uh, so we can share a little bit more with the local community. 
tour. Now we are at the Heritage Coal uh, Coal Yard, where we actually have a number of different products that you sell to the general public. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, the pub the products that could be purchased here, uh, some of the people who buy them, and what they use them for? Okay, we have the bituminous Bakerstown SEMA coal, which comes locally from Salisbury, Pennsylvania, and also a big vein SEMA coal, uh, which is also mined locally, and our nut coal products uh, that people burn in to heat their homes during the winter time season. We also carry uh, driveway stone and uh, different types of landscape mulch and landscape uh, stone as well. I saw you had a, a number of different uh, stone sizes and yes. quality yeah. there as well. Yeah, there's a, a small size on the river stone, a big size, a middle size, and a small size, of course. Uh, and anyone can come here and, and purchase these products? Absolutely, yes. We draw a lot of uh, people even from Oakland, Maryland, uh, West Virginia, Kaiser, West Virginia. Uh, people come from uh, all around, really, a lot of people uh, are traveling even up to two hours away to buy some of the products that we hold here. Now, like your mulch and your stone, I see it's out here undercover. That's what you'd see at most landscaping supply uh, retailers. But your coal, this is something I, I saw that's a little bit different, is under roof. Yes. And why would that be a positive thing for the people that are purchasing coal from you? Well, most of the time, whenever you're purchasing coal, it's in the winter months. So whenever it's under roof, uh, the snow is not on it, the rain's not on it, uh, the, the coal can't soak up the water from the rain, so you're buying strictly coal, and it's, you're there's no water. You're not paying for that away. extra weight, exactly. and it's yeah, a little bit cleaner to deal with as yeah, well. Yeah, it's on a cement pad as well, which is uh, an advantage. Uh, that way you're not getting down into any stone or dirt uh, when you're loading. Okay, well, hey, thanks for telling us a little bit about what it goes on here at the yard and the products that are available. You have a good day. Okay, you too. We're in the offices at Heritage Coal now, and I'm with Darlene Buchanan, their office manager. And Darlene, we were talking a little bit off camera about um, kind of the job growth and economic uh, development opportunities that Heritage Coal has brought to the Myersdale area, to Somerset County. Um, even so far as having some young people from the schools that are interning or maybe um, getting their first job experience here at Heritage. Tell me a little bit about uh, the employment opportunities here. Here at Heritage Coal, we said that when we first started, we were going to create 25 jobs. We have actually created another 40 jobs on top of the people that we already employed here. And we have reached out to the Myersdale School and the Salisbury School. I do have one young girl that's like interning, I guess you could say, because she wants to go into office work. And she works here with me one day, or I'm sorry, one hour every day after school. She's going to work more in the summer. We'll teach her a little more about office work. So we've added quite a few jobs for our community. And what type of employees are you looking for as you add these new jobs? Like, What do they range from? Uh, what are some of the things that they do? We range from the equipment operators into we have a water person. We also were getting um, rock truck drivers, plant. We're building the prep plant, so they're going to be needing people for in our prep plant to wash the coal. We have the tipple that we load. So there's all kinds of different positions that we have for our company. Myersdale has been a great community for us. They welcomed up with open arms. We feel so appreciated here and the business is nice. We've taken a lot of vendors from the community also to help them. And they have just been very, very welcoming to Heritage Coal and we greatly appreciate it. We're with Dan Parisi of Heritage Coal and Mike McCluskey of NOH2O. And we want to talk a little bit about some of the environmental uh, issues that you deal with here at Heritage and uh, with your your partner here as well uh, at NOH2O. So um, Dan, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of those uh, issues that you deal with? Well, sure. Uh, basically, everything that's being mined here in the Shaw Mines complex is under a consent owner agreement with the uh, state of Pennsylvania, Department of Environmental Protection. And what we're doing is we're remining the old abandoned deep mines, pre lawed deep mines, uh, that basically were mined anywhere from 1890 through 1920. It created a lot of acid mine drainage uh, and, a, and a lot of pollution events. 
And it really came to a head in 94 when we had a major pollution event, which basically really crippled the Castleman River the whole way to Ohio Powell. So there's been a remining initiative since then. And just to summarize, um, pretty much what we're doing is we're remining all these old deep mine voids out. We're eliminating the mine pools. And we're lucky enough that we have about 25 feet of native limestone and part of the overburden, the material we take off to get to the coal. So we not only can eliminate the mine voids, we can all also replenish the groundwater with natural limestone that's there. We're basically taking the limestone that's on the top, putting it in the bottom. Uh, it, it's an ongoing uh, process. Like I say, it started in 94. And what we do, we eliminate the mine pools, we put trenches in, we fill them full of limestone. And that way, any of the groundwater will not build up in these mine pools. It basically just drains. So, uh, you know, we've been very successful. Um, you know, we have some water data to that I can show you and uh, you know how, how much improvement we've made basically in the, in the main items like pH and acidity iron and even aluminum we've reduced the loading value 70 percent since we've started and it, it's continuing to improve on some of the other areas where we're treating basically you're using um, uh, uh, chemicals and so on like caustic soda and mm -hmm. soda ash which is high in sodium we started working with Mike about a year ago Mike was involved more uh, in cleaning and reusing water, maybe more on, on a laundry basis and husbandry, type, things like that. We got him involved in acid mine drainage, starting looking at some of our water. And um, uh, the, the results look re very well so far because he's basically getting effluent limit water, cleaning the water pretty much without any chemicals at all. So it's, it's, a, it's a bright thing. It's something that, that uh, really looks favorable in the future, and I can let him just at least describe it a little bit. Sure. Sure. So essentially what we do is we take, um, we take the raw water. Now, it hasn't been chemically affected. Um, and we use that raw water, and we pass it through mechanical filtration. So we don't actually chemically affect any of the uh, water that we have. So minus the caustic soda minus the, the limestone. You know, we don't put any of that in the water. We pass it through the mechanical filtration, we take out all the metals, uh, and it, really we kind of get drinking water out of it. Um, but we get legal water, to, to Dan's point. Um, so what we're doing is we're actually piloting that, uh, that equipment um, with Heritage uh, at their tipple site down here, uh, here within the next month or so. Um, so we're, we've done pretty well with it, um, and, and we're looking to do you know a little bit bigger project uh, at Pit 18. Right. Uh, so the Pit 18 project's more of a um, it, it has a classic uh, active system in it right now, which is a lime uh, addition system. But we're looking to replace that with a uh, uh, much larger uh, membrane filtration type system. So uh, a lot of exciting things, and, and it's pretty neat because you know it's it's a different approach to acid mine drainage than uh, what a whole lot of people have done in the past. Well, I want to thank you guys for sharing the exciting things you're doing to make sure that uh, that water is reclaimed and clean and uh, good for the environment and the community, and for share, showing us around a little bit here at Heritage Coal today. You're quite welcome. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Legislative Report. I'm Representative Matthew Dowling from the 51st Legislative District in Fayette and Somerset Counties. If you'd like more information on anything you've seen on today's show or to contact my office, visit repdowling.com or find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Mm -hmm.